Unusually high ocean temperatures have caused an unprecedented coral bleaching event in Florida. In today's episode on the Dive Saga channel. I am on the move to the USA for a couple of photo shoots. Since I have half the day off from shooting, I decided to go for a visit to the Florida Keys to find out more about a topic that's very close to my heart, coral bleaching. If you look at one of our previous episodes, you will see we made a piece about stony coral tissue loss disease in the Caribbean. In that episode, we covered how corals are the cornerstones of our reef system, as they provide shelter for juvenile fish species, provide a storm barrier for our coastal areas and even contain the key to developing medicine for some of mankind's most pressing diseases. Stony coral tissue loss disease keeps raging across the Caribbean and now an already existing issue just got way worse. Heat waves aren't just setting records on land, they're also setting records at sea. The record temperatures that are suffocating us here in South Florida are now also affecting sea life. The oceans are now hitting dangerously high. Researchers say the high temps can threaten coral reefs and cause bleaching. Coral bleaching is not a new phenomenon, but the unusually hot summer in Florida has led to an unprecedented bleaching event, the scale of which was until now unheard of. I'm visiting the Coral Restoration Foundation, where Restoration Program Coordinator Bailey explains some of the issues. The, the event that's going on this summer is um, kind of an, what we're calling an unprecedented bleaching event for the Florida Keys. Uh, bleaching is not a new phenomenon, especially not here in the Florida Keys. We see bleaching mostly every year, but the thing that's different about this year is how early it happened. Typically August and September are the hottest months for us in, water wise in the Florida Keys. Uh, and so late August, early September, we usually start to see some signs of paling and bleaching in our corals, but it's not too much of a concern because the, the water will cool down again in late September, early October, so typically those corals recover. But the thing that's really, really upsetting and unprecedented about this year is that the bleaching event happened in the middle of July. It was a huge temperature spike where we saw a lot of our reefs with, with uh, water over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of them even got to 93, 94, which is really, really stressful for the corals. Most corals grow optimally in water temperatures between 73 and 84 degrees Fahrenheit, or 23 to 29 degrees Celsius. That is why we find most corals in tropical waters. It is an environment they thrive in. But too much of a good thing can also be bad, so corals struggle when temperatures get much higher than that. They can, of course, withstand some fluctuations, but when water is too warm for too long, corals will expel the algae living in their tissues, causing the corals to turn completely white. This is what we call coral bleaching. When a coral bleaches, it isn't dead, and they can survive a bleaching event, but they are under more stress than normal and are subject to mortality. As Bailey said, the bleaching event in Florida this year is unprecedented and that shouldn't go undocumented because the impact on our oceans and on us is equally unprecedented. Captain's Corner Dive Center in Key West, Florida cares deeply about the state of the reefs in their area, so big shout out to them for offering to take us out on a dive to see the effects of the bleaching event for ourselves. Gearing up to go see bleached corals feels a little bit like slowing down when driving by a car wreck. But unlike car crashes, 
coral bleaching due to rising ocean temperatures is less understood by the general public, so I think it's worth documenting and explaining. Bailey is taking us to one of the reefs where the Coral Restoration Foundation has spent the last few years outplanting thousands of restored coral fragments. Unfortunately, the outplanted corals are already severely affected by the temperature change, and many of them have a 100% mortality rate. For clarity, this is Acropora cervicornis, or staghorn coral, a coral type that has shown great success in coral restoration efforts. A healthy staghorn coral looks orange or yellow, most of the staghorns we see on this side are as white as a sheet. When corals bleach, they lose the symbiotic relationship that they have with an algae cell that lives inside of them. And when they lose that symbiotic relationship, they're basically starving to death because those algae provide a lot of food for the coral. So corals can really only survive a, typically a couple of weeks when they're bleached unless temperatures come back down. And if they do come back down within a relatively quick time frame, they can regain those algae and go on about their lives. But since this bleaching event and this thermal event happened so early in the summer, in mid-July, they still had two and a half months to go and it's really unlikely that a lot of those corals will be able to survive two and a half more months of bleaching until the, the waters cool back down. These individual pieces of staghorn coral have been thriving for the last few years. But as is evident on this dive, most of them are bleached. Here and there a few pieces are fighting for dear life. The goal was of course for these pieces to grow and grow and eventually cover large sections of reef as they once were. But that outcome is now looking almost impossible. A little bit further, we find a deceased colony of pillar coral. This is not due to coral bleaching, but due to stony coral tissue loss disease, as explained in one of our previous episodes. These pillars were once fluffy and covered in polyps, but nothing but a rocky skeleton remains. It goes to show that our coral reefs are battling many issues at once, which is also affecting other life on the reef as their areas of shelter are diminishing. Fish and other marine species deserve a healthy and thriving ocean environment, and quite frankly, so do we. Oceans feed us, regulate our climate, and generate most of the oxygen we breathe. The oceans produce over half of the world's oxygen and absorb 50 times more carbon dioxide than our atmosphere, they also serve as the foundation for much of the world's economy, supporting sectors from tourism to fisheries and international shipping. I know that this is extremely depressing and bad news like this can be super discouraging, especially if you care about our ocean ecosystems. But there is still an opportunity to turn this around. One thing that you know, it definitely needs to come out of this is awareness and that's really happening. Uh, this is getting a lot of media attention, a lot of people are, are kind of questioning like what can I do, how can I help, um, and, and so that's a really big plus that's coming out of all this. Unfortunately it takes a lot of times a bad event to, to um, bring awareness to something, but that is a positive. CRF, uh, Coral Restoration Foundation, and a lot of restoration practitioners in the Florida Keys are going through what we're kind of deeming a rescue scenario, where we've partnered with a lot of land facilities that have seawater tanks on land, where we can control all the water parameters, the temperature, the salinity, pH, um, and we're bringing a lot of our, our healthy corals to land to take care of them on land during the summer. And then after the summer and the heat is over, we'll take them back to the water. So just a precautionary me measure and safeguarding measure to, to try to get those out of those corals out of the water before they bleach. Is there anything people can do? I think the biggest thing that people can do is educate themselves on um, our politicians and our, our global leaders, demand climate change and, and every aspect of that and just you know to be a more eco-conscious um, 
consumer and, and live a more eco-conscious lifestyle. If you're a diver, uh, uh, especially in the Florida Keys, there's a lot of programs that use citizen science to monitor bleaching, especially to sites where restoration practitioners don't go every day ourselves. So uh, like Moats Bleach Watch is a wonderful program to get to be a part of um, and you can su submit photos and observations through that to help monitor. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I want to expressly thank the Coral Restoration Foundation as well as Captain's Corner for taking us out on their boats and of course Bailey. And thank you for watching. If you find stuff like this interesting, subscribe to the Dive Saga channel and I'll see you next time.